A very good morning to everyone. Thank you so much for joining in today for our uh, uh, study about the prophetic ministry. Let's pray and uh, we will begin. I would like to request one of us to please lead in prayer and then we get into uh, our uh, lesson. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the class we are about to have. God, uh, I give all my classmates and Pastor Nancy into your hands. Uh, be with us throughout the session. And as pastor teaches, uh, help us to open our mind and heart and understand the deep truths in your Bible. We thank you that you're a God who speaks with us. We thank you that uh, you always want us to reveal, uh, reveal things to us, Lord. Uh, you're such an amazing God. We stand in awe of you, Jesus. And I pray that every single truth that we learn today, it will sink deep into our heart and it will reflect in our lives so that we can be a blessing to others. Give us good Wi-Fi connection throughout the session. Be with us and guide us in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jeffina. Uh, so we've been looking at the way in which the prophetic uh, releases God's power, releases the work that God wants to do. So we saw that the prophetic uh, can come through as a prophetic word. It can also come through in the form of prophetic intercession. And now we are looking at uh, prophetic song. We did talk about prophetic power, which accompanies, uh, you know, accompanies uh, uh, or rather releases, releases again what God intends to do. So while we talk about prophetic song, uh, we said that song and music has a connection you know, with the flow of the prophetic anointing. And we've seen the way uh, Elisha understood the meaning of uh, the connection of music along with the prophetic anointing and so he called for a musician uh, and then you know, he was stirred up to prophesy we also saw uh, how there were these prophetic musicians uh, appointed by david in the tabernacle and there was a role for these musicians and worship leaders to play and they were in fact uh, taught and they were continually encouraged to flow in the prophetic. So the way we saw prophetic word bring encouragement, comfort, uh, you know, strengthen the believer, prophetic song can also do the same thing. And of course, the release of the uh, prophetic anointing uh, uh, through healings and supernatural works of God, prophetic power you know, as, as we uh, call many of those things, that also happens when we ministered through prophetic song. So what else uh, can we understand about prophetic song so that we can use this, you know, in our, uh, in, in our uh, worship and service okay, in the kingdom? Now, we looked at the broad categories of prophetic song and we said that some songs are directed towards God and they are songs to the Lord. Some are songs from the Lord for the encouragement of his people. And then you have uh, two more categories, prophetic declarations or songs that are uh, declaring the truth of God's word. Now we will see how that actually affects the spiritual realm. And the fourth, of course, is prophetic action which accompanies one or more of the above. So we were talking about prophetic songs, which are sung unto the Lord. So we said that these songs can express one's love, adoration, affection towards God. And scripture always encourages us to sing out a new song. And when we say new song, it is a song in the moment, you know, a song which God is speaking over his people. So it's not necessarily, uh, you know, just uh, new words, new lyrics. It can be new words, new lyrics, lyrics, but also it can be a timely song or words that uh, may be a part of an old uh, 
song that has already been sung quite often. So that's how we would understand it. But the importance is, uh, the key thing to understand is to pick up what God is saying in that moment and release it. So the new uh, in the Hebrew, we were saying that it comes from the word uh, kadash or uh, chadash, how, however that may be pronounced, which means new. And it's new both in terms of uh, the sense that it brings to the listeners uh, and also the freshness. Okay, the freshness of the knowledge or uh, understanding which is being brought to us. So this is the new that the Lord births. And as these new songs are sung, you know, we, we would uh, uh, experience the new things that God is doing. So when I say new, it's refreshing, basically, what, what we are talking about. So uh, uh, maybe that new song is connected to a new miracle. It's connected to a new deliverance. It's connected uh, you know, to, to something new and fresh that the Lord is doing. Maybe there's an understanding which we had, but now it's surfacing as a fresh new revelation in our hearts that we can use in a timely manner right now so these these are all uh, uh, you know the things that actually happen when we release that new song which god is putting on our hearts so the lord gives us these songs which uh, you know sometimes these songs arise from our hearts and sometimes these songs are uh, you know given to us so given to us in the sense you we read uh, that moses you know, he received a song and then he that song was taught to the people and they sang it back to the lord similarly you would read about something known as the song of the lamb Okay, in the book of Revelation, where uh, it talks about the greatness of God, the goodness of God. So it's sort of, you know, it's coming from the Lord, but being sung back to the Lord. So there are words in Revelation 15, verses 3 and 4, there are words like, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are your ways. So you see, affirmation of his attributes, O King of the saints, who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name. So the this is affirmation of the attributes of God, but it is, uh, you know, coming from the Lord. This is also the song of the Lord, uh, Lamb coming from Jesus. So in this manner, you know, we are able to uh, sing them back to the Lord. Even in the book of Hebrews, we read about the Lord Jesus who declares the name of God to the uh, brethren. So brethren are, in other words, it's referring to the believers who have now been redeemed by the work of Jesus. So he calls them brethren. He declares the name of the Lord to his brethren in Hebrews 2.12. So the attributes of God are being praised. God is being praised. The Father is being praised through the Son before the people of God. So, you know, this, many times we have songs that come from the Lord, which we again redirect back to the Lord in worship. And that's wonderful because uh, uh, at, at uh, moments we know how great God is, how good God is. But then, you know, we may not have the words to actually uh, express that. But thank God he gives us the words and we can put it back into our singing, into our worship and, uh, you know, uh, uh, have that communion with the Lord, experience his presence through the songs that the Lord himself is putting into our hearts. And uh, in Revelation 19.10, you know, it says that uh, uh, the uh, testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy in Revelation 19 and verse 10. So, uh, what it means is that in what Jesus is saying or what he is testifying or, you know, uh, what he's releasing, there is a flow of the prophetic, you know, which accompanies that. So we are able to flow with what the Lord is saying. And you can also look at it this way, when the flow of the prophetic is happening. So uh, we need to look for these songs as they come, you know, uh, as the prophetic anointing flows uh, we we will catch what 
Jesus is actually saying. And in what he is saying, there is that increased measure of the prophetic anointing as well. So that's how it really works. And we must look forward to this. Now, there can be songs of exhortation to the people. These are songs that uh, are from the Lord, but to the people. What do these uh, songs look like? These songs can arise uh, uh, like it can be anything you know, that talks about the, the love of God for the people or uh, these can be song which, songs which uh, uh, talk about the identity of God's people, where God puts it on our hearts, where he says that, uh, uh, you know, you are my children or, or you are no longer slaves. So uh, these songs release that that affirmation about who the people are, their identity, and uh, uh, the way God uh, thinks about them, feels about them. So that's a beautiful thing. Now, uh, the Word of God encourages us to uh, have songs in our hearts. Okay, now these songs. Uh, I'm just sort of you know it, it, uh, digressing a little bit. Uh, so we see passages where uh, you know Paul he admonishes the believers he says that don't be drunk with wine uh, but be filled with the spirit speaking to one another in so psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the lord giving thanks always for all things to god the father in the name of our lord jesus christ this is in ephesians chapter 5 then verses 18 through 20. So Paul is telling the people, instead of being drunk, you know, be filled with the spirit and release songs to the Lord. So both these categories, whatever we saw, songs that we sing to the Lord, songs that are released uh, upon the people, our hearts can be filled with these songs. And even in the book of Colossians, he encourages the believers and he says, you know, let your hearts be filled with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, Colossians 3.16. So our hearts need to come to a place where we are filled with these songs. So again, here there are some categorizations just for our understanding. Psalms are usually uh, psalms from scripture where uh, people have already spoken those psalms and then you know we just pick those psalms and we sing it again we may reword <coughs> it in a more excuse me contemporary way uh, for a better understanding uh, but then you know many of them are already there in scripture for us or we may sing what is known as hymns hymns have to do with uh, singing of uh, 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 biblical doctrine and themes. Okay, so uh, there are already uh, doctrines in scripture for us that talk about, you know, uh, our God, He's three in one. So, uh, and, and these things have, if you look up some of the older songs that were written, they carry a lot of good, strong doctrine, biblical doctrine in them. So, uh, these themes right these established scriptural themes in them are helpful for us to sing so that would be the hymns uh, that were released to people and even today when songs are based on this they are known as hymns and of course you know you have spiritual songs spiritual songs are spontaneous they're more like you know songs that come in those moments words that arise they uh, just uh, bubble up uh, within us in those moments so they are known as spiritual songs so all these psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, uh, they can be filled in our hearts and we can release it unto the Lord. So I was saying that you know there are songs that the Lord puts in our in our hearts uh, which we are supposed to sing over the people because he is a God who loves the people and uh, you know he is a God who actually enjoys his people and one of the ways in which he expresses that enjoyment or that delight uh, is, is truly through the release of songs okay over the people so uh, a very oft repeated uh, uh, scripture for many of us is from the book of Zephaniah, Zephaniah 3 and verse 17, you know, where the scriptures tell us the Lord your God is in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with 
singing so our god sings over us so how does that song yes he is singing but then how does that song uh, uh, actually reach the people it reaches through prophetic singing okay so when it is given the those words are given to god's people or worship leaders what happens is they sing it over the people and that's how the people are able to receive god's expression of love over the people okay so that these are the two first two categories of songs uh, you know that uh, we enlisted now moving on to the next two categories here uh, though i'm going you know one after the other please feel comfortable to interrupt me at any point uh, uh, should you have a question okay so uh, let's continue here uh, the next set where songs of declaration over demons situations or nations so <clears throat> the bible uh, tells us that declarations are very powerful okay declarations are what are done with authority and declarations have a spiritual impact uh, so you know something happens in the spiritual realm when we declare in psalm 149 and verses uh, 5 through 9 scriptures tell us let the saints be joyful in glory let them sing aloud on their beds let the high praises of god be in their mouth and a two edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute on them the written judgment this honor have all the saints praise the lord so here uh, the description sounds more like you know one is in war and one is executing judgment over the enemies so how do we execute judgment on our enemies you know it can also be done through what is written here as high praises high praises high praises are singing uh you know singing words which declare the greatness of our god you know like when we say let's say things like uh, you know yours is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is the honor uh, you know uh, or, or uh, you're above all uh, all nations you're above all positions uh, you know your your glory is great sometimes when we are singing when we are worshiping these words are released and when we sing these these affirmations of god's greatness that's what scripture calls as high praises i remember just two weeks ago i think uh, jafina uh, she is on campus right now with us so she would remember we had uh, th this five hours of uh, continuous intercession and uh, a worship happen at the bible college and towards the end uh, the bible college students were singing one particular song i don't know the name of the song it was new to me but uh, the chorus of the song was just so powerful as we were just singing like you know uh, about the glory of god like you are above you are above what song is that what words are those jafida uh, i think forever and amen by chris tomlin okay you okay. are the words, greatest and highest right ha exactly yes yes you're the greatest you're the highest uh so just the presence of god was so mighty as we were singing those songs it was almost like uh, the sense i had as an individual is as if i'm just standing in the presence of god and you know his enemies are bowing down and i'm i'm declaring it and i'm saying yes god you know you're the greatest you're the highest those are the high praises of god and when we sing those high praises as we saw here in psalm 149 what is happening you know we are declaring judgment scripture says you know terms like execute vengeance uh, on the nations punishments on the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron so it's like war we are engaging in war against we're not talking about flesh and blood you know ephesians 6 says 
our war is not against flesh and blood so even here when you talk about kings you know that this is referring to spiritual principalities rulers kingdoms right uh, and something is shifting something is uh, taking place a victory is being released in the spiritual realm uh, and so we must be open to the high praises of god psalm 149 says that as we sing these high praises of god joyfully you know we sing it aloud we sing it unto the lord vengeance is being uh, uh, pronounced upon the enemy and we can expect even spiritual at atmosphere uh, over nations to begin to shift because god is moving you know the hindrances the the uh, opposition of the enemy away now uh, there are many other scriptures that encourage us you know along these lines of singing the high praises of god making the declarations uh, for god even psalm 8 and verse 2 it says that god has put praise even in the mouth of infants and that again has the power to silence the enemy and the avenger or the devil so whoever we may we may be very young in the lord or we may even be young in the natural little children are forming the greatness of our god you see as we are singing things are happening in the spiritual realm uh, and we must not forget that so our praise and worship it's not just a singing session you know where god had a good idea and said okay you know every time uh, we we uh, uh, come together let's just have some singing you know it's helpful uh, for all of us to feel good no there are great uh, implications of worship and praise and so uh, as, as people who know uh, you know the prophetic ministry we must understand that god accomplishes mighty things when we hear from him and we move uh, particularly in praise and worship okay so thank you jeffina she uh, shared some of those words high praises over here your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and so uh, you know in this manner god can release some words he can give some words to uh, to us when we are leading people in song so let's be open to make these declarations and the uh, powerful thing about declarations as i've been saying is the demonic world uh, you know is dealt with so another incident in scripture is uh, when uh Saul right Saul uh, he was tormented by a uh, demon spirit and uh, to overcome that or you know he really needed some spiritual warfare for that demon spirit to be uprooted and uh, removed you know uh, from uh, doing what it did and why was Saul in this condition you know that's another story altogether he had uh, been disobedient to god and so willful disobedience uh, over a long period of time the protection that god had over his life was uh, you know it it was removed and so uh, he was more open or we talk about open doors isn't it entry points and so saul had created this entry point and which is why he was going through the torment by the disturbing a uh, spirit but at that time he asked for somebody who could play a skillful player and we know that david you know fit into that uh, uh, description and he came and as he played for king saul uh, that it drove away demonic powers okay, and he felt free so what do we understand from this you see uh, praise worship you could even say the anointing or the presence that comes as we as we release prophetic music in this case you know uh, uh, david played is what we understand prophetic music prophetic lyrics songs words these can deal with demonic powers and uh, uh, you know we we can see we can see a sh- some you know people use all this new language these days and some people don't like it the things like shift in the atmosphere and all that this is what they mean basically that scripturally uh, uh we we know that song 
the right kind of song the right kind of music can affect the spiritual realm and uh, overthrow demonic powers so that would be the third category now moving on prophetic action accompanying one or more of the above so uh, some examples would be you know jehoshaphat uh, he went into battle uh, in second uh, chronicles 20 now he had prophetic singers yes they were praising god but then he had to actually go in okay with the singers and then they had to face they had to face that day they had to uh, go as an army and uh, you know start walking into the battle so if they were just to sing back home uh, i don't think what god wanted to do for them would have been fulfilled yes they were required to sing and praise but they also needed to actually go uh, into battle step in and that's when they saw the supernatural victory in their lives uh, and uh, you know that is again something that we must understand sometimes god may lead us into action along with song uh, now this action could be anything uh, but you see the key thing is not to do because it has been done before you know sometimes uh, we say okay everyone kneel down or raise your hands or uh, uh, you know close your eyes bow your heads it's not so much because these are good things to do but it's more because in this moment there's something that that god is leading in, in the uh, you know heart of the worship leader as we lift up our hands it's it's almost like we're declaring our victory or something you know the action is connected to the worship the action is connected to what uh, god is doing in the spiritual realm so sensitivity to these things is is very very important uh, so moving forward so these are the different ways uh, in which the prophetic song is released now let's talk a little bit about the tabernacle of david uh, which uh, obviously we we you know uh, talked about a lot because this is something that really blessed god's heart and so around 1000 bc david established the tabernacle of worship you know where the ark of the covenant was brought in it was an extravagant setting where people uh, continued to offer up praise and worship to the lord 24 bar 7 it was excellent because he had chosen the best of the best he had appointed 288 prophetic singers and you know when we say the king appointing they were the best of the best in uh in in that community and uh, so this was excellent he didn't do uh, anything that was below the standards you know, uh, or, or rather uh, he he wanted to do the best for god because he deserves the best so 288 prophetic singers vocalists 4000 musicians to minister before the lord so we see the excellence in what was done and you know we will also see that there was uh, order there was discipline uh, there was planning there was strategy uh, in the way this whole tabernacle was established so the levites ministered before the ark of the lord prophetic singers musicians they worshiped all day long um, and of course you know uh, some of the songs were also uh, intercession so that happened and so once uh, david's uh, rule was over solomon took over but the good thing is that solomon kept up this kind of prophetic worship and uh, we know that you know, he he god showed his grace and his blessings in many ways uh, over solomon's life there were other kings who continued you had kings like jehoshaphat joash hezekiah josiah uh, ezra you know uh, 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 josiah and leaders leaders like ezra nehemiah who followed this uh, davidic way of continuous worship to god and god of course uh prophetically through uh, amos the prophet spoke in amos 9 verses 11 and 12 and said that he would rebuild the tabernacle of david and uh, 
later on in the book of acts you know there is a repetition uh, or the quoting of this prophetic passage uh, of amos and again you know it, it uh, in the context of in acts chapter 15 because you know the gentiles are coming to know god and they had to make a decision regarding the gentiles so in that context again uh, this passage is repeated where uh, it is quoted in acts 15 verses 13 through 18 that god has promised that he will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of david which has fallen down and he will rebuild its ruins and will set it up so what does it mean it just means that god in our today's context Okay, or in the uh, last days, we are in the last days. He is working on this. And it's beautiful in, in scripture, wherever we see God say, I will, you know, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I will bless, you know. So there are places where God says, I will. And that is so encouraging for us as believers. In this passage, he says, I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David. I will rebuild its ruins. I will set it up. So you see there, he's passionate. He's determined to make this happen once again. So in its essence, now we may not see, uh, uh, you know, like a literal tent or a temple, which is constructed that's not the point it's it's more about the heart of worship uh, the same qualities right we said extravagant 24 bar 7 excellent orderly structured plan so these are all the, the the elements that we can take out of the davidic order of worship or the tabernacle of david and see these things happen in our communities today and the uh, uh, important thing, why are we talking about uh, this kind of worship? Because there were prophetic singers and we are talking about prophetic ministry, isn't it? So prophetic singing and music was a huge part of the tabernacle. And if it was a huge part of the tabernacle, what can we expect today? Same thing prophetic songs imagine, you know, you keep the music going for uh, years on end. Uh, Obviously, you need new songs. We can't just keep uh, churning back up the old songs. And not that they're not enough, but our God delights in freshness. Uh, and that's why the prophetic fresh, remember, Kadash, new song, which is he's doing something fresh. He's releasing a fresh word, a fresh healing, a fresh miracle, a fresh deliverance. So, uh, we must be excited to receive it and release it. So let's uh, talk a little bit more about the Tabernacle of David. So in the Tabernacle of David, they were there were worship leaders. Uh, they were appointed by the king. Now, these were obviously the best. There is a person called Chenaniah. Uh, and the, again, the importance of Chenaniah is that he was very skilled. So it says here, uh, he, uh, David appointed leaders of the Levites, um, singers accompanied by instruments of music, stringed instruments, harps and cymbals by raising the voice with resounding joy. Chenaniah, the leader of the Levites, was instructor in charge of the music because he was skillful. So you see, there were leaders. Uh, these leaders were skillful, meaning you could also say they were well trained. They had uh, they had exercised their capacities in music. So it's nice to have somebody who is skilled, not just passionate. Uh, passion is good, but skilled is more helpful because that way the leader can guide and lead the others under them. And that's the way David appointed people there. So Chenaniah, it also says, the music master with the singers. So he appointed Chenaniah, he appointed uh, Asaph. Okay. Asaph, what is the key thing about uh, Asaph? He <coughs> was a psalmist prophet. So he was into prophetic worship. And uh, you would read the names of many other people under him. And, you know, the sons of Asaph and all. What did he do? He basically trained them in prophetic worship. 
so in the first chronicles 15 verse 17 it says asaph heban jeduthin who should prophesy with harp strings instruments and cymbals so you see that there's a requirement not just that they must be good at singing and good at playing uh, music but there is a need for prophesy can they hear from god can they release those songs so that was important in the david recorder so these are all things that we can we can expect you know in our today's time where we would see skillful uh, leaders uh, in music in in singing uh, prophetic leaders they know how to prophesy they teach others how to uh, lead in prophetic music uh, and you know prophetic songwriters uh, how do songs come about not just uh, you know by taking the doctrine okay we have a lot of learned things in scripture it's a good thing to take it and put it in song uh, but there's something special about hearing what god is saying and then putting it down and a lot of songs have uh, uh, you know come that way even in the tabernacle of david you know uh, david and asam asaf where psalmist uh, it, it is said that uh, asaf has written 12 psalms how did he write these psalms obviously he heard from god and he wrote it so there is a need for prophetic songwriters yeah, and today you can talk about so many songs right in our own communities we heard them sung elsewhere uh, they they come from the lord and people write it so i was just telling uh, in my previous classes i've heard a testimony from this person this indian songwriter called uh, <coughs> sheldon uh, sheldon bangera <coughs> he was sharing once how you know there was a particular i don't remember right now whether it was a melody or whether it was uh, lyrics uh, but he he was saying that he's always open he's not just open to songs when he's leading or when he is in a session intending to write a song but he's always open god can speak anytime and god can release uh, music into his heart anytime words into his heart anytime so apparently once something like he was riding a bike and then he suddenly got this uh, you know the, this download into his his spirit and uh, he quickly recorded it on his mobile phone because he knew that uh, hey it's coming from god i just received something by the spirit this is prophetic you know prophecy and uh, he records that and then i i think he kind of later put that to uh, tune and you know worked on a song so point i'm making is prophetic songs uh God can release at any time. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, okay, I'm, I'm planning for the 5th of June and only then I'm going to hear from God. No, uh, we could be we could be going for our morning walk and there comes a song in our spirit. You know, We could be praying for our loved one. We could be in a very uh, painful time. You know, we've heard songs like I raise a hallelujah. So, you know, sometimes songs come in those situations, those moments. But when one is called, to be a prophetic singer and a musician, we need to develop that habit of picking it up. And uh, maybe you know, today we have good resources, mobile phones and things. So just quickly make a note of it. And it can be a blessing to God's people and to the body of Christ. So yeah, so Psalms were written in that way. David and Asaf, and there are you know some technical details here. I've read this many times, but it uh, does not necessarily enter my my system very well, uh, but you know I I will uh, let you all probably study this uh, on your own. Uh, psalm Hebrew word for psalm is mizmor, uh, so this is uh, instrumental music, a poem set to notes. So there are some psalms like this by by David. They've given the example of Psalm three. There are some uh, songs which are. Uh, in, in the Hebrew, shigayon, or they're simply thoughts, you know, or you may want to call it meditation, the wanderings of the mind, random, 
random thoughts and david wrote so many of such psalms meditations right so psalm 7 is an example there's another term called uh miktim or michtim you know which which is uh among the songs it's it's a precious precious uh, song or a golden psalm or a poem if you may want to call it uh, and that is called as a victim and psalm 16 is an example so there are such categories you know you can uh, study about them uh, prayers even prayers can be sung so tefila is that uh, term for the hebrew word for prayer meaning intercession uh, then there are contemplations of Esaf, known as uh, Mashkil. Then um, there is just a song, you know, just a song by Esaf, known as Shir in, in the Hebrew. So there are all these categories as well. Uh, and as, you know, um, people of old set up these put this into uh, music and wrote it all up. Uh, even today, we can do that because God has not stopped speaking, isn't it? That's what. That's how we started this course, saying uh, we're talking about this because we have a God who speaks. He speaks in many ways uh, and uh, uh, we can't box him up. And so let's be open. You know, God might put songs into our hearts. And uh, when God puts a song into our hearts, it's not limited to only uh, worship leaders. It can even be just us as paul wrote right he wrote to the uh collosians he said just songs hymns uh be filled with these things making melody in your hearts so as a normal believer i can still get a song from god and if i want to uh, you know put it to my own music and sing it uh, well and good it may not be published but uh you know it's beautiful he can put songs in all our hearts and we can take time maybe during our prayer time and say lord just put a tune in my heart just put some words in my heart and just sing it to the lord sing it maybe it's a song unto the lord or it's a song you sing over yourself right or a declaration uh, as we said uh, so in all these categories uh, just a few more things as we talk about prophetic worship you know prophetic worship gives that idea of spontaneity where it arises and it is released. However, we saw how excellent David's tabernacle was. So we cannot dismiss you know, some other uh, 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 important important lessons Okay, uh, that must be applied to prophetic worship. What are these? And this would be helpful for mainly for uh, worship leaders and musicians. Preparation, okay, just because Prof prophetic song is spontaneous it doesn't mean you just show up and then let god take over we can pray through and god can impress it on our hearts way before the the singing session and uh, this kind of develop and this kind of preparation and prayer and waiting upon the lord will also help us become more and more sensitive uh, as prophetic worshipers so preparation is important preparation in prayer waiting on the lord preparation in the word is important we'll see later when it comes to interpretation of prof the prophetic word i could be receiving something but if i don't have a rich deposit of the word in my heart it becomes very difficult to identify hey is this from god is this not from god but when a worship leader is strong in the word that process becomes a little easier because you're able to discern you can tell ha huh, correct this is scriptural this is not scriptural and so preparation is important next expectation expectation is whenever uh, one is leading uh, we do expect the god god may give us a new music a new tune a new uh, lyric but if there is no expectation then we are not listening god is speaking but we're not being sensitive so that can hinder the release of the prophetic so we can set that expectation even in our teams and say hey sometimes this happens you know you get something new but that's good so why not look for it why not trust god to gi give us that that word and that move of his and uh sensitivity you know 
it's already understood uh, only if a worship leader develops that sensitivity to what god is doing what god is saying you know how is he moving by his spirit right now okay now is the time let's let's sing softer let's sing in declaration loud joyful it it really helps if a worship leader is sensitive but the flip side is also true if they are not sensitive maybe in that moment god is just bringing in that quietness to just heal people's hearts but then the leader is taking us into declaration and you know it can be very uh it can be difficult so sensitivity is is so key uh, as far as leading in worship or leading in song is concerned and uh, the next key important thing is teams so working in teams uh it's not just enough for the worship leader to be aware but the team also must know about prophetic worship because they have to flow with the leader they should get disturbed hey what is this person singing suddenly you know they know oh okay the spirit of god is leading in this way let's flow together uh, and sometimes what happens god may give the lyric to one person he may give the music prophetically to another person maybe the musician starts playing something prophetically and the team supports so the singer joins in you know singing singing uh uh maybe a, a tune or a, some words and then parts of that song come from other members in the worship team so team work is very important the, the worship leader must be sensitive but the worship team also needs to be sensitive so you know times of praying together waiting upon the lord together studying the word together are very helpful for the entire team to be prepared in this way then uh, about you know projection of lyrics i've already shared uh, and uh, and uh, you know uh, even the projecting team media team can know that sometimes god might do this differently so we are not surprised okay uh all right so that's about prophetic music and song it's really exciting uh, and uh, yeah i i hope that uh, it was helpful uh, any thoughts questions before we wrap up and move on to our uh, next session i just have a thought yes um, so when we talked about declaration uh, i remember uh and for the pastors i know he told like uh, be your own prophet declare the words uh, over your life so is that right statement to make uh, be your own prophet that's something i mean i that time it was good for me i just want to know like what are your thoughts it's is it a right statement to make like, be your own prophet declare these words over your life okay you heard this somewhere yeah a pastor when preaching he said like be your own prophet okay so uh, see jeffina uh, if you look at it technically then it may not be accurate okay uh, because not everybody is called as a prophet but we've learned about you know the progression and we've said that all believers can prophesy so that way be your own prophet uh, we know scripturally that may not be accurate but we understand the essence of what that pastor is saying okay what is he saying basically he is saying prophesy god has given us the the capacity to declare words over our lives with authority and you know as we saw that section right psalm 149 psalm 8 was to uh it it really does something in the spiritual realm as well as in our life today and in, into our future so let's take the essence okay uh, and and not get you know confused with the technicalities i hope that's okay yes pastor thank you yeah sure thank you thank you uh yeah there's so much to talk about uh, i feel like uh, uh, let's dwell on these these uh, uh, learnings uh, let's take a break 10 minutes come back let's chat a little bit more about uh, song i know that many of you are into worship so this is relevant uh, we can talk a little bit more and then we'll move on to chapter 8 okay so uh, let's go for a break now and uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes 10 o'clock let's meet thank you